In the last two years, Iran's Shahed 136 has rewritten the rules of modern warfare. Its low cost and sheer persistence have overwhelmed even the best air defenses, especially in Ukraine. For just a few thousand dollars, these loitering drones can cripple critical infrastructure and exhaust expensive interceptors. Now the United States has answered, with its own low-cost loitering munition designed to swarm the skies. It's called Lucas, the low-cost uncrewed combat attack system. Built for mass production, rapid deployment, and modular flexibility, Lucas isn't just a weapon, it's a strategy. It doesn't aim to outclass the Shahed with high-tech wizardry. It aims to beat it with scale, simplicity, and smarter networking. So, in today's video, we're diving into what Lucas is, how it compares to the Shahed 136, and why it might shape the future of U.S. drone warfare. Let's dive in. Lucas was publicly shown in mid-July 2025 during a Pentagon courtyard display of autonomous systems, where it drew immediate comparisons to the Shahed because it was presented as a practical, affordable strike option rather than a high-end science project. Reporting identifies Arizona-based Spectreworks as the developer and places Lucas inside a broader push for attritable, quickly fielded drones across the services with an emphasis on getting usable airframes into units faster than traditional procurement timelines allow. But why build something that looks like a Shahed at all? The answer is straightforward. Shahed series drones have proved disruptive precisely because they are cheap to make and good enough to cause damage when used persistently and in numbers. Western forces faced a cost imbalance trying to shoot them down with interceptors far more expensive than the drones themselves. U.S. planners appear to have concluded that they also need a low-cost one-way munition that can be produced at scale and used for saturation, deception, and persistent strike. That is the gap Lucas is meant to fill. Lucas adopts a Delta Wing plan form with a rear propeller and a compact fuselage, closely resembling the Shahed's aerodynamic silhouette. Several reports describe it as a mid-size Group 3 UAS, which keeps size and complexity well below large, high-altitude vehicles, while preserving meaningful range and payload. Multiple sources also highlight a modular, open architecture that allows payload swaps for different missions, including explosive warheads for one-way attack, electro-optical or infrared sensors for reconnaissance, and communications packages for relay. It can be ground or vehicle launched from simple rails, enabling quick employment from austere sites. Networking is another repeated theme. Lucas is described as able to operate inside a mesh communications environment, acting as a relay node when needed, and coordinating with other uncrewed systems. That makes it more than a single expendable weapon. It can help extend connectivity in contested areas, support swarming tactics, and feed targeting or battle damage assessment back to commanders. Open sources avoid hard numbers for Lucas and focus instead on roles and architecture. By contrast, the Shahed 136's broad outlines are well known from battlefield use. It is a long-range one-way drone with a piston engine, a compact warhead, and navigation based on simple guidance that is good enough for fixed targets, fielded in large numbers to saturate defenses. Lucas appears to mirror that logic while aiming to add better reliability, more consistent guidance, and more options for payload and networking. Several accounts also note that Lucas can serve as a realistic threat emulator for training against Shahed-style raids, a role that benefits from visual and flight profile similarity to the Iranian type. Lucas is not intended to outperform high-end U.S. drones. Its value lies in cost efficiency, mass deployment, and operational persistence. When fielded in swarms, these drones can saturate air defenses and create openings for other assets. Units can also use them for repeated harassment of fixed infrastructure that would be too expensive to strike repeatedly with cruise missiles. 
Because Lucas can be ground or vehicle launched without a runway, launch teams can disperse and complicate enemy targeting. In maritime scenarios, particularly in the Indo-Pacific where distances are large and bases are vulnerable, expendable networked drones that can fly hundreds of miles become useful for scouting, for forcing the opponent to spend interceptors, and for creating dilemmas for air defense operators across multiple axes and altitudes. Several reports emphasize that the Pentagon is fast-tracking attritable drones through accelerated pathways, aiming to move concepts into operational use in a fraction of traditional timelines. Lucas is presented within that context, with public reporting noting a rapid glide from prototype to production readiness. Faster cycles matter because loitering munitions are evolving quickly, and their utility depends on availability at scale rather than perfect performance in small numbers. The biggest unknown is performance under fire. Can Lucas navigate when GPS is jammed and data links are degraded? Public material does not yet confirm alternative navigation modes or terminal seekers, so accuracy against moving or relocatable targets remains unproven. Pricing is also unclear. There is no official unit cost, and public reporting sticks to terms like low-cost or budget-minded. Forbes notes that matching the Shahed's very low price point is difficult inside U.S. supply chains, even with commercial components, because labor compliance and quality controls tend to push costs up. Some coverage speculates that Lucas aims for the low five-figure to sub $100,000 range, but that remains unconfirmed and will depend on production volume and payload choices. The practical test is whether commanders can buy and lose them in quantity without stressing budgets, which is the essence of a tritable design. However, the larger story is about balance after all. The U.S. has invested heavily in exquisite long-endurance platforms, but recent combat has shown the value of simple, affordable systems used in quantity. Lucas signals a complementary track that values numbers, quick fielding, and good enough performance when used en masse. It is a tactical adaptation to how drones are actually being used in high-intensity conflicts, not a wholesale shift in doctrine. If the networking and modularity deliver as reported, the same airframe can thicken U.S. kill chains, absorb enemy interceptors, and help push data across contested airspace. If the costs and timelines slip, the gap that Lucas is meant to fill will remain. Lucas does not try to outclass the Shahed 136 with exotic technology. It tries to beat it on practicality, availability, and integration. As low-cost loitering munitions keep shaping modern battlefields, this is the U.S. bet on mass and adaptability. What do you think? Is this the right direction for U.S. drone forces, or should investments stay focused on higher-end systems? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this video insightful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest defense news and analysis.